in times of crisis, our actions define our legacy. In Mercer and all Glaze counties, farmers are making changes that could help save a vital resource. The tranquility is deceiving because this is a battleground and the stakes are high. It's all about this body of water, Grand Lake St. Mary's, nine miles long, three miles wide, 13,000 acres. Beneath the surface lies an unsettling fact. This lake is in a fight for its life. There's a little town south of the lake called Montezuma with a thriving population of maybe 500. That's where I grew up. Uh, and as any kids of that era would do, we fished, we hunted, we trapped, and just had a wonderful time. Great memories of the lake. Many people are engaged in efforts to save this lake, but only one person has saved the lake as their job description. Milt Miller is president of the Lake Restoration Commission. We love this body of water, and we value what it brings to our area recreationally and economically. Based on state studies, the lake brings in just about $200 million a year in tourism dollars and supports about 2,400 jobs. That money sustains the economic health of small communities around the lake. For many years, the lake has been an economic engine for the area. But below the surface, something was not right. Gathering unseen for many decades, a problem was about to emerge. We noticed as the years went by at our, at our house that um, the channel was getting greener each year. Um, it had a little bit more of an odor to it. The lake always had had a green tint, but it was so murky, and you noticed that there was less uh, light that was able to penetrate into the water. And by 2009, it was pretty obvious that we, we had an issue, a big issue. We had an algae bloom, uh, and it was devastating. And I tend to get emotional over this, and for that, I apologize. But people went bankrupt. Um, homes on the lake right now, well, not right now, because there's been a resurgence this year. Homes on the lake were worth zero. And they were priced at a premium previously. They were prized real estate. And uh, through my work with the commission, I've talked to big box stores, I've talked to mom and pops, I've talked to car dealers, I've talked to appliance salesmen, <laughs> and what people have to understand is the lake touches every facet of our worlds. I've talked to human resource departments, and when they're trying to attack talent into the area, they're going to naturally ask, what do we do for fun? And then they're told about the lake, and they refuse the job. The first summer the algae bloomed was a disaster. The next summer was worse. 2010 was a very difficult year for this lake. Heavy algae blooms, uh, blue-green algae, uh, to the point of where you could watch it grow. It would cover the entire lake. It was unlike anything we had seen before. And then it was, how are we going to actually fix this? Because we knew that there was something that was dramatically wrong. The odor was unbelievable. We would get four to five miles away from the lake before we got it, and you could smell it. It was, it was that strong, horrendous. You talk about economic impact. Salina, the city on the west end of the lake, draws this drinking water from Grand Lake St. Mary's. And their superintendent of the water treatment plant said his cleansing process had escalated a half million dollars just because of the change in the water content because he has to make it potable. There was some anger. People were angry at the state. They felt the state hadn't done anything. We called on the state of Ohio for help. Uh, and we're told basically in so many words that it's your lake, your problem, you fix it. So a number of us rallied together and said we can do that. And we, year one, raised $660,000 locally in private funds in the hardest of economic times. That's demonstrative of the commitment to this lake.
consultants were hired to help develop a strategic plan for saving the lake. In the meantime, new leadership came to Columbus. Even before Governor Kasich had his entire cabinet appointed, he had the three pertinent directors come and meet with us. That'd be DNR, Health, and EPA. And we presented them with this master plan. And they embraced that idea, and they've been great partners ever since. They understand the value of what they have here. They understand that there are people in this community willing to help fix this. The state of Ohio has funded $8 million in alum treatments. Alum, short for aluminum sulfate, is dispersed in the lake, where it binds with the phosphorus and starves the algae. In the spring of 2011, the Grand Lake alum treatment was the largest application ever done anywhere in the world. We needed a short-term fix to get our morale back, to get our economy back, to get the usage back. Alum is a short-term solution because high levels of phosphorus continue to flow into the lake. That ground is so saturated with phosphorus that each and every time it rains, it's a new slug, if you will, coming into the lake. The problems started decades ago. As the lake's popularity grew, so did the developments catering to boaters and fishermen. The wetlands that ringed the southern shores of the lake, wetlands that acted as filters, virtually disappeared. The lake was stripped of its natural defenses. And there was something else. This is farm country. Of Ohio's 88 counties, Mercer County is traditionally number one in agricultural sales. And that success is largely based on livestock, hogs, dairy, and poultry. The problem is animals poop. And any time you have water and too many nutrients, the result is a damaging algae. We don't want to harm or put the farm community out of business. Clearly, we understand that's our heritage. And what we're trying to find is technology that allows them to continue to do what they're doing, but have a way to get rid of those nutrients. From the beginning of the algae crisis, the farming community has borne the brunt of the criticism. Farmers over the past five years have really changed the way they thought about it. When it all first came up, they were in denial. Today, farmers are pretty much changing everything they're doing and looking at it, we, we gotta do as much as we can and go from there. We, we, you can't just sit back and think the problem's gonna go away anymore. They are serious. A good example of that may be the use of cover crops. There are more cover crops planted in this watershed now than there ever have been. We started out with just a few acres and we've grown to now 100% of our corn silage ground gets planted to a cover crop. The advantage of having the cover crop is that it keeps the soil in place, keeps the nutrients on our farm so that we don't have erosion or anything getting into the streams. In the winter time, when you get heavy rains, the nutrients will flow freely on top, and especially if the ground would be frozen. So by having these buffer strips out there, they help suck up the nutrients so that it doesn't just run away. Under virtually every farm field are perforated pipes called tiles. They're designed to speed drainage. But they also accelerate the movement of nutrients. Some farmers are finding ways to regulate the water flow. I put in four tile stops on each of our big tiles so that we can shut those tiles off so the water cannot flow into the streams. At times of least impact, the valves can then be opened to allow groundwater to drain. But even as more farmers embraced best practices, the Ohio EPA felt compelled to take action. The Grand Lake St. Mary's watershed was declared distressed January 18th, 2011. And this is a new designation set to focus on watersheds that have suffered severe impacts to water quality. For a distressed watershed, as far as the farmer side, we have to play by a whole set of rules. We are not allowed to apply manure from uh, December 15th to March 1st. We have to keep records of every place the manure goes, take samples of all the manure and the soil. Lots and lots of record keeping for this new system. 
there are definitely some additional costs uh, for farmers uh, as a result of these rules. The biggest hardship with not being able to haul in the wintertime is that we need a lot more manure storage. Otherwise, in the wintertime, we'd be hauling every two, three weeks. Now you go two and a half months, and that's a lot of storage that you need to build. There's a lot of soil testing you have to do ahead of time. All that takes time and money. Some farmers are willing to invest in it because they have a next generation there ready to take over. Other farmers are in their 50s, 60s, and talk about just quitting. Quite frankly, I don't envy them because they're living their lives right now as our ODNR director, Jim Zeringer, has told them at meetings, you're living your lives with a bullseye on your back. And they are. And in fairness to them, I grew up on a farm. There wasn't an EPA back then. The conventional wisdom was the uh, economical way to bring nutrients back to your ground was through manure. It's a generational thing. More was better. Farmer-led initiatives like Ag Solutions are researching new techniques to solve the problem. We want to leave this farm better than when we received it. So every new technology that comes down the road, if it's feasible for us, if it makes sense, we're going to try it. And if it works the first year, we're going to do it again the second year. Mercer County Soil Water Department has been really a good place for us to turn to every time we needed help. On a daily basis, I'm meeting with farmers, uh, going over a nutrient management plan or clearing up some questions they may have. Our local soil and water will actually come to our farm and evaluate all our buildings, our facilities, any nutrient concerns we may have, and they will make the recommendations to us as what we should try to do to improve our farms. The farmers are all for cleaning up this lake, and over the last five years, we've really increased the number of best management practices that we started doing here in the lake watershed. People can see the changes that are being made and realize that there is a lot of work being done in order to improve the lake water quality. People can do amazing things when they come together with the right uh, mindset and, and the right direction, and I think we're seeing that here. It's such a wonderful asset that we simply can't give up. We can't afford to not win the battle. It's too important. 